Hey everyone, I'm back with another chapter of Junie B. Jones and that meanie Jim's birthday. Now remember, we have been reading it and we are still in our story at the parts where Junie B. is still not invited to meanie Jim's birthday because they got into a big argument on the school bus. She's really upset about it because she wants to go because she doesn't want to be left out. And her mom and her grandma Miller are telling her, it's not going to happen, Junie B. I don't think you're going to Meanie Jim's birthday. And Junie B. tried one solution already. She told her mom and dad that she was going to move her birthday to the same day as Meanie Jim's. Only her mom told her that her birthday is not until the summer, so she can't move her birthday. So right now we're on chapter four, and it's called Moving. You ready to dive in? The next morning, I didn't get out of my bed. Not even when Mother hollered, time for breakfast. She came into my room. Didn't you hear me, Junie B? It's time to eat, she said. I looked up from my pillow. Yeah, only I'm not even hungry. Plus, also, I'm moving today. Mother smiled. She sat on my bed. You're moving, huh? She asked. And exactly where will you be moving to? I did my shoulders up and down. Somewhere, I said. Somewhere where, she asked. Somewhere not here, that's where, I said. Mother hugged me. This is still about Jim's birthday party, isn't it, she said. You're still worried about not getting an invitation? No, I'm not, I said, on account of, I'm not even going to that school anymore. I'm moving today. Mother shook her head. Then she went out of my room, and she and Daddy did some whispering in the hall. And pretty soon Daddy came in. He gave me a piggyback ride to the kitchen. Then Mother made my favorite hot cereal, and she let me have all the brown sugar I wanted. She sat down next to me. You know, Junie B, Jim is only doing this to hurt your feelings, she said. He just wants to get a reaction from you, that's all. Sure he does, said Daddy. And when someone is trying to hurt your feelings, there's only one way to get back at them. You have to pretend you don't care, said Mother. You have to pretend you don't even want to go to that party, because if you pretend you don't want to go, it'll take all the fun out of it for him. Daddy winked. You can do that, can't you? He said. You're the best little pretender in the whole entire world. Just then, my whole face lighted up, because that gave me an idea. And here is the picture of Junie B's daddy giving her a piggyback ride to the kitchen. Hey, I just figured out what I can move to, where I can move to. It's called It's a Small World After All, and it's in Disneyland. Remember that, Daddy? It's where all those puppets keep on singing the same song over and over again. I smiled. That would be a happy place to live, don't you think? Daddy looked at me a real long time. Then he put his head down on the table and he started knocking it on the edge. Mother pulled him up from there. They went into the hall and did some more whispering. After a while, Mother called to me from her bedroom. Junie B, could you pick up the phone, please? It's your grandfather. He wants to talk to you for a minute. I picked up the phone. Hello? Hello yourself, little girl, said my grandpa, Frank Miller. What you up to this morning? I'm moving today, I told him. Grandpa Miller sounded upset. Moving, he said. Oh, no, you can't be moving. If you move, then you won't be able to come over to my house on Saturday. I crinkled up my eyebrows at him because something in this conversation smelled fishy. Yeah, only how come you want me to come to your house, I asked, and how come it has to be Saturday? Because Saturday is the day I do my work around here, remember, he said. You're still my little helper, aren't you? I thought very careful about this. Yes, I said. On account of sometimes, I did help Grandpa fix stuff. It's called odd jobs. Are you doing odd jobs, I asked him. Is that why you want me to come there? Sure, I'm doing odd jobs. But I can't do them without my little helper, can I? You're the one who wears the tool belt, aren't you? I smiled very proud, because Grandpa Miller's tool belt is the bestest thing. It has a jillion tools hanging off them. It wraps around me two whole times, and I don't even cave in. Just then, Grandpa Miller made his voice real quiet. You haven't even heard the best part yet, he whispered. Guess what I'm going to be fixing? I whispered back to him. What? Then Grandpa said for me to hang on a minute, on account of he wanted to close his door or else Grandma might hear. If your Grandma hears, then she'll want to be my helper instead of you, he said. I waited very patient. Ready, he asked. Ready, I said. Okay, I'm going to be fixing the upstairs toilet. Just then my mouth came all the way open. Because fixing the upstairs toilet is a dream come true, that's why. 
Are you going to take the lid off the top, Grandpa? And are you going to keep flushing it and flushing it? And are you going to watch all the water go out of that thing, I asked? Sure am. That's half the fun of fixing the toilet, right, he said. Right. I said, very excited. Plus, also, I love the big ball that floats on the top. Me too, said Grandpa. I love that thing too. And so I can count on you, right? You and I can have a date on Saturday? I thought some more. Yeah, only I think there's something you forgot, Grandpa. What, he asked. What did I forget? I raised my eyebrows at that silly head. You forgot that I'm moving today. <laughs> and that's the end of chapter four. <laughs> I think that Junie B's Grandpa Miller was trying to distract her. What do you think? But Junie B couldn't be distracted. So until next time when we read chapter five, bye.